Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. Uh, tonight is sort of a follow-up to last week's episode where we talked to uh, Jerry Croteau and Mark Hill around the Be My HIV Valentine event that's happening right here in the Drawers Kitchen and Design Studio on February 14th, Valentine's Day. Uh, as we mentioned in that broadcast, uh, this is sort of an homage to the June's Eatery uh, event that happened uh, back in 2017, November of 2017. Um, that Casey House in Toronto put on. Casey House um, is Canada's first and only standalone HIV um, hospital, uh, hospital for folks living with HIV. Uh, and they put together this event uh, back in November of 2017, a pop-up restaurant in Toronto where all of the chefs um, were folks living with HIV. And I was fortunate enough to be part of that event um, as a patron. And as I mentioned on the last show, that sort of sparked my desire to have something very similar on a smaller scale here in Barrie. And uh, um, in partnership with uh, Elevate, um, Vive Healthcare, and some of our local sponsors, as well as Drawers, uh, we've been able to actually bring this event to Barrie. Again, on a smaller scale, um, June's uh, has another pop-up restaurant that's happening um, the first week of March, March 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Toronto. Uh, one of my guests is actually gonna be one of the chefs for, uh, for that event as well. I will also, this time around, be a chef at, at June's Eatery. Um, but instead of 16 folks living with HIV, we have four of us that will be doing the, uh, the food prep and serving of the meal here on Valentine's Day. And I have those individuals who are part of that experience here with me on tonight's episode. We've got my buddy Kelly, Guy, and Carla, who are all folks living with HIV here in uh, Simcoe County and are going to be our chefs for that evening. So thank you and welcome all of you to Let's Be Perfectly Queer. I'm gonna start with you, Kelly. Yep. Um, Kelly is also my colleague at the Gilbert Center. We both um, work at the Gilbert Center for Social and Support Services and the Be My HIV Valentine event, while not only an awareness campaign um, for folks in our area, it's also um, the launch event for the Gilbert Center's 25th anniversary, 25 years of yeah. this sort of work being done here in Barrie. And it's, uh, it's a real privilege, I know, for myself, and I think I can speak for Kelly here to be, yeah. to be part of that. Um, but getting to the event and being a chef as part of this event, why was it important to you to, uh, to be part of this? I think it's just, it's important for me to be part of this to um, reveal that I am HIV positive and I have been for 35 years and to um, smash stigma and be part of an event, a, a very aware event. Now, have you disclosed your status on such a public scale before, or is this the first time? And, nope. and how are you feeling about that? So. This is my very first time disclosing it. A lot of my family and some friends know in the Muskoka area. Um, it's scary, but uh, I feel that the awareness needs to be there that HIV can affect anybody. Yeah, I think it's important, because we, we talked a lot with, uh, um, with Mark and Jerry on last week's show um, around folks in the LGBTQ community mm -hmm. and, and the effect of HIV on those of us and unfortunately we ran out of time and I didn't get a chance to say you know it, it affects so many more folks and that's why I was very happy to have both you and and Carla join us um, as women living with HIV to talk about your experiences and mm -hmm. uh, and and how the stigma affects you because we we hear so much about the impact of the epidemic on on gay men but we don't have enough information and certainly not enough in my opinion um, disclosure and, and awareness and visibility of women living with HIV, especially cisgendered heterosexual women. So yes, yes. Can, you, can you touch on that a little bit for us? And Yeah, so um, I haven't had any like community discrimination because a lot of people, some people know my size, but some people, like a lot of people don't. Um, but I have had discrimination around dating and being told that I have AIDS and not to mm. touch me and, and things like that. So I think coming on the show and being part of the Be My HIV Valentine is to smash the stigma and to bring awareness that you know HIV doesn't only it affects everybody everybody across no one is you know immune from it it can affect you in your life yeah that, that's one thing HIV is not it's 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 not discriminatory no. that's for sure no. um, it does affect everyone and there are parts of the world where women and children are more greatly affected by HIV than uh, than gay men for example yes, yes. Um, well that may be the predominant stat 
in, uh, in Canada and North America. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, Sub-Saharan Africa, we see the majority of folks affected by HIV are women and children there. Yes, so, yes. Um, you know how I feel about you being on this program, about you being part of this event, and I applaud you for that. And I think, as I've told you before, by doing this, you're saving lives. I mean, yeah. you, you do that every day in the work you do at the Gilbert Center, and, and Kelly does some awesome work there with, uh, um, with women in particular, but other groups of folks living with HIV locally, um, and, and the peer support that, uh, that Kelly offers, and, and it's part of the, the work that I do as well in talking with folks who are newly diagnosed. Um, we have folks who um, come to this area uh, as immigrants to Canada and helping to, to navigate some of the barriers around that and access yeah. to medication. And, uh, and I think the fact that you are brave enough to, to be ready to tell your story is going to do more good than I think you can even imagine. <laughs> thank so you. thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move on to my buddy Guy, who is the most experienced of all of us in, in this sort of, I'm not, I'm not outing you for your age, Guy, because we're, 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 we're pretty close in proximity there. Um, but Guy was um, part of the, the June Eatery, the first June Eatery in 2017, and was trained by uh, Matt Bazile, the celebrity chef who, uh, who works on, uh, on that event. And to have you as part of our event here locally, I think is fantastic. Uh, it was through Junes that you and I met right. and have been able to, to forge a friendship. And then you, you moved up to this area shortly thereafter. And, uh, um, and now being part of our local community uh, and part of this event is, is wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your story and, uh, and why you're, you're part of this event and Junes as well. Um, well, I'm a gay man living with HIV for over 30 years. Um, I lost my partner back in 2000, um, so have been through the tough side of HIV and, and what that can mean. Um, and through the work with, uh, with caring for him, I got involved with Casey House, which is an outstanding organization. I got involved with the board. and. Um, um, the chair and CEO came to me back in summer of 2017 to tell me about this. It was a really bold and innovative initiative. Junes was the first in the world and um, really was to, um, um, you know, sort of start a dialogue about smashing stigma. Um, we've made so many advances in HIV. It's, it's not what it once was, um, but the big challenge is stigma. Um, Stigma in the general community, stigma in the gay community as well. Um, and it's, it's all about ignorance and fear. We need information and education. We need to start and maintain a dialogue. And that's what June's did. Um, it had, uh, it, like I said, it was the first of its kind in the world and raised an incredible amount of media attention. We had over a, uh, over a billion uh, media impressions, which was just amazing. And um, I was really proud to be a part of it and um, posted on Facebook about it. And all my friends were coming back, when are you going to do this in Sudbury? When are you going to do this in Ottawa? And the first one outside in Toronto is in Barry. And hats off to you, my friend. You've single-handedly <laughs> driven this. And I think it's an amazing thing to, to carry on that dialogue. And I'm delighted to hear we're doing the, um, the family-style setting where we're, food is such a a personal and intimate thing amongst human beings and, you know, creates a dialogue setting and, um, you know, just carrying on the conversation, spreading the word that this is nothing to be feared. Um, only, um, um, only ignorance is, is holding us back. So, you know, I applaud you for what you're doing. I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of this, so thank you. I've definitely not done it alone, but, but I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, um, the fact that, yes, this is uh, a family-style meal, and this area right here is where we're going to have a, a long table that will seat uh, 50 of our guests on, on Valentine's Day. And behind us is a space where we'll all be cooking this meal. And what's really cool is because it's such a, a smaller scale, not only will we be preparing this meal, but we're actually going to be able to get a chance to serve the meal to our guests and allow us to, yeah. to interact with, with the guests um, while they're eating. They'll be able to, to watch us as, uh, as we're preparing and, and chat back and forth. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, again, the very first Elevate event who we partnered with on this event was held in this space as well. Um, so I know what that was like to, 
to watch the uh, the chef do that and, and his work behind the scenes while we sat in the, uh, it's, it's nice that we have uh, wine and alcohol pairings that go along with the meal as well. That, that helps to elicit conversation as well, right? And, and perfect timing that it's Valentine's Day because yeah. this is a message of love. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Triumphing over hate and you know through through education and yeah. and smashing stigma carla <laughs> carla martinez Sorry, i'm still reeling from kelly's disclosure <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um same question essentially give us a little bit of your your background your story and and why you felt um you wanted to be part of be my hiv valentine okay i'm I always say I'm fairly newly diagnosed, but I guess it's getting old now. <laughs> I uh, was diagnosed on May 4th in 2017 and um, immediately came out um, as being HIV positive. Um, and I was surprised at how much I didn't know about it and needed to get educated. And the more I got educated, the more people, I felt people needed to uh, hear more about HIV and learn the leaps and bounds it's it's taken over the years and uh, so yeah I jumped on the whole smash stigma campaign and if you're sitting next to me on a bus or in a car with me you're hearing all about the newest latest science <laughs> in HIV so yeah I'm really really honored to be part of this eatery I can't wait well we're certainly proud to have you and uh, I think I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I just going back to to Kelly's um, disclosure and and the courage that it takes to do that in such a public setting. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about um, when you when you first found out you were diagnosed? I know one of the the places that you went to to get information and support was the Gilbert Center. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the earliest support you may have had around that was was from Kelly. Can you Absolutely. just give us an idea of of that relationship and how it's uh, how it's flourished? Um, yeah, I, when I was diagnosed and I was reeling from the news, um, I just started Googling everything that I could. And sure enough, the Simcoe County AIDS Association transformed itself into the Gilbert Center. And as a branch, if I believe I have that correctly, a branch of the Gilbert Center was HIV information and a source for good information. So I reached out and I was immediately um, connected with Kelly. And yeah, it's, the irony is unbelievable because you sat there going, you're going to be okay. <laughs> you're going to be okay. And yeah, it's a hard pill to swallow, but we got there. We just got to keep talking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As, as Guy mentioned, it's all about uh, the stigma associated with HIV. Mm -hmm. And stigma, my definition of stigma has always been ignorance and fear equals stigma. Mm -hmm. um, very dissimilar to you equals you. Undetectable equals untransmittable. That's how we combat the stigma, we, we talk about it, we educate, and we try and alleviate that fear through education. And doing this sort of event and, and being on a show like this where we can show people what the face of HIV looks like in, in 2020, I think is important. And, um, and again, I applaud each of you for being as open about your status. Um, mm -hmm. Just my own disclosure, I was diagnosed in February of 2015, so it'll be very close to my five-year anniversary um, when this event takes place. Um, and I think certainly as, as long-term survivors, I'm, do you like that term, long-term survivor? Is that? I'm just a survivor. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, long -term survivor, yeah. yeah, I think everybody's definition is, is different, but certainly um, you and I, as I consider myself an HIV baby, having been diagnosed <laughs> in, in 2015, <laughs> Well, and it's, it, it's, it's different when, when you and I are diagnosed in, in an era where the science is solid and while anybody that I still talk to, even today, newly diagnosed, those initial fears, there's that common thread of I'm going to be alone forever, no one's going to love me and, you know, that's the end of my life. Um, even knowing the science and having that, it, it's that 35 plus years of misinformation and, and stigma and, and and campaigns that were out back in the early days of the epidemic that were very widespread that our government put out there to have people protect themselves. Now that we have got the science there that proves that you get on your medication, you become um, undetectable, have a suppressed viral load, you cannot pass on the virus. Mm -hmm. um, there, isn't, there isn't the awareness campaign around that information and the truth about what it means to live with HIV today like there was with the misinformation of 35 years ago. We don't have those, those campaigns any longer. It's certainly something that in the work I do, I, I push for and, and advocate for. 
But I think having, having this sort of a platform where we can talk openly about living with HIV is incredibly important. Um, and if I could maybe get back to Kelly and talk to us a little bit more about what it means to, to be able to come out and talk about living with HIV um, as someone who's not part of the LGBTQ community. Um, and while I say that, I mean, I feel like you are because of all the, <laughs> because of all the work we do together. But, but yeah. yeah, but as, I mean, we're all, we're all cisgendered, um, we're all cisgendered white folks. So we've got a little bit of privilege sitting up here today as well. And um, not to tokenize anyone, but my, my goal was to try and find um, a little bit more diversity in Simcoe County to bring to the table for this event as well. Um, but again, a lot of the stigma around it and the fact that folks who are even marginalized more than the fact that we're living with HIV, but um, people of color, um, uh, recent immigrants, even mm -hmm. other women um, have difficulty being able to, to talk about this um, openly. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can maybe just talk a little bit more about that and why it's important for you to be part of this event and sort of be that face for a marginalized group within an already marginalized group. Mm -hmm. I think I, for, for me myself, it's important because um, I want to tell my story. I don't want other people telling my story and getting it wrong because it has got wrong. It, it, people have told it wrong. And I want to be able to say that, you know, being a woman, heterosexual woman living with HIV and undetectable for 10 plus years, um, it's okay. Like, if you know, we want to have a relationship, it's okay to have that relationship. And I think that's the main part of disclosing my status um, for the HIV Valentine and on your show is to bring that awareness to to individuals around the U equals U, the undetectable U is untransmittable, and that it's the HIV doesn't discriminate. Anybody can get it. So just the awareness, a part about it, is really important for me, and also for the work that I do. The awareness around that too. Yeah. And what about you, Carla? The sort of the same question, and and having that platform. I mean, like I say, Guy and I, we are we're we're, the t we're almost a tokenized vision of what <laughs> of what HIV is supposed to look like. The, the gay white guy is supposed to be the guy with HIV, right? Um, obviously, you're not a gay white guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, very similar. Same same story. Um, I, I didn't want other people telling my story. And yeah, I think that was really important to me, more, more so than anything. I didn't want the rumor mill to start. And I thought I'll just, you know, I was kind of pulled into it as well. But I thought, no, I might as well just go with it. And once I got educated as to what was going on and the newer information, newer science out there regarding HIV, that I, I felt obligated, actually, to just start teaching everybody and anybody. I practically walk around with a little billboard sign on me. but. Or um, frisbee that says you equals you. Or frisbee, yeah, any, anything, t-shirts, whatever. I'm yeah, I think it. both both uh, mm. Kelly and I have our you equals you t-shirts on underneath our aprons today. And it's important. It, it's not what it used to be. And like you said, we, you know, we came on at a at a. Uh, I hate to say perfect time, but it, you know, it's horrible to actually to say that. But if to have things happen the way they did, it was perfect for me. I'll speak for myself because to find out what there was available and and to know it was nothing at all what I had in my head and that was really important for me to just tell everybody because I'm like oh my god that's not what I thought you know and and I thought geez if I'm thinking that way I need to tell other people and it is hard the whole dating thing we could just do a whole episode I think all of us could on that and uh, I, I think it's I wouldn't say it's even harder but it's very difficult being an HIV positive woman trying to date and uh, you know we all know the stigma surrounding um, you know partners potentially disclosing if you weren't ready to disclose, and that's just a whole other ball game. But yeah, that's yeah. that's a, a show we could do <laughs> yeah, we could a few episodes on, on. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah, we've all been yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just want to make sure the audience is aware too. We talk about um, the new medications and the science available now, and um, I think this is why it's important that any any dialogue we have around HIV today, we have to include long-term survivors or, or survivors of the epidemic. If it weren't for folks like Kelly and Guy, would we necessarily have been able to develop the science that we have today that allows you and I as relatively newly diagnosed to know that we can get on our medications right away if we have access, and not everyone does, but for those fortunate enough to have access to medication and reach a suppressed viral level within six months. I mean, for me, I think it was less than three months and I became undetectable and have remained undetectable 
ever since. And U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable, means that folks living with HIV who are on effective treatment and adhere to that treatment cannot pass on the virus sexually to partners. Uh, it's a no-brainer, it's simple science, um, but it's a message that a lot of folks are still unaware of, and sadly, a lot of folks living with HIV are still unaware of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most recent stats indicate 14% of folks in Canada living with HIV aren't aware that they're living with the virus. Um, and that's because people are afraid to get tested because they're afraid of what that positive diagnosis means. Uh, and the more we talk about it and dismantle the stigma, the more folks are gonna be encouraged to, to get tested. Um, and just on that, that theme of stigma, and I'm gonna go back to, to you for this one, Guy. Um, as a long-term survivor, I can only imagine in, in the five years, almost five years that I've been diagnosed, I've certainly experienced stigma, um, mostly as you mentioned within, within the gay community, which is really disheartening um, when you have people online saying that you should kill yourself because you're living with HIV um, and you're looked at as that much of a threat. 30, 30 plus years living with HIV, um, do you have some stories around stigma and, and how that's affected your life? Oh, but, well, many. Well, first of all, I want to say um, long-term survivors shouldn't, um, shouldn't be a, a length of service badge. It's, it's commitment to smashing stigma is, is what counts, and, and, and the two of you are committed to that in spades, and, and I applaud you for that, for embracing it um, so, um, so wholeheartedly. But um, it, it's stigma, I mean, you know, even... Um, uh, just on social media apps when you're going back and forth with someone and the question usually comes up in the most um, derogatory and demeaning way uh, and the way it's usually worded is are you clean uh, and uh, um, for a long time it was it, it, uh, it really depressed me it got me down and um, um, it, it, it's so belittling and it, it's so ignorant and so lacking in understanding and compassion about another human being to, to talk to someone that way. But it's, again, it's just the ignorance and fear. It's, um, um, you know, once you're HIV positive, you haven't got that fear anymore. <laughs> you understand. You, you, <laughs> you cross that line, right. you haven't got the fear anymore. It's, um, you get on with your life. Um, so, uh, um, you know, it's, um, in, in broader society in, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there, there was an absolute hysteria that we went through and, uh, and there was, uh, um, you know, uh, everybody you share the information with, you have to, um, think about deeply as to what the impact is going to be and how that person is going to respond and you have to um, evaluate each individual relationship be it family be it friends be it, be it occupational um, uh, dealing with government services um, you, you know you have to make a, an informed assessment of what the reaction might be and how you might be treated uh, we've come a long way but there's, there's there's still a lot of that that needs to be addressed and, um, and hopefully an event like this will push the wall that much further. Yeah, especially in an area like this too, when we all, we all know this is a highly conservative area and, uh, and you know, living with, living with HIV um, is stigmatizing enough in, in liberal society, but in a, uh, in a highly conservative area like Simcoe County um, to have that, that support. Um, well, I, I, I see it just in trying to reach out to folks living with HIV that are willing to, to, to come forward and, and discuss it like the three of you so bravely are, are able to do. That's, that's been a difficult feat for me. Uh, initially, I was looking to have a minimum of, uh, of six chefs for this event, but uh, we got sort of stuck at four, and <laughs> it turns out that's gonna be a, a good number after all anyway, and, and speaking with our, uh, our chef, Suzanne Barr, this is the, the perfect number for her to be able to, uh, to train and, uh, and get us out on the floor actually mingling with the guests as well, so I think that's it's turned out to be a good thing, but again, as I mentioned, ideally, I'd love to be able to see a, a more um, diverse section of, uh, of folks living with HIV represented as well, and maybe we'll do a, a second rendition of this in another couple of years, and we'll see some, uh, some different faces and some new faces out there, but uh, 
hard to say. Mm. Hard to say. We see we see new faces come through the center uh, every day, and I think as we work with those individuals, and uh, and again, I think especially you being on this show because you've worked at the center longer than I have, and uh, and generally speaking, I think you have more contact with. Uh, with clients than I necessarily do at, at this point anyway in my career. And I think our clients seeing your face and, and telling your story uh, mm-hmm. on a public platform may encourage others to do so. Not that anybody has to. It's not that you get HIV and you automatically have to disclose and be out there and, and talk about it and become an advocate. That's, that's not everyone's calling. Um, but I know, I, I think I can certainly speak for, uh, for Carla on this because we've talked about this before. Um, you and I do see it as is sort of an obligation mm-hmm. and, and an opportunity to, to give back. And the fact that we have been diagnosed um, in a time where, you know, thanks to those before us um, and those who aren't with us any longer, we're able to actually live a healthy life. And it's important that, that we sort of give back and pay respect to, to those that, uh, that weren't as fortunate and, and share that story and to be in a position where um, you know, we have that support of, of family and friends, and I think we're both at a time in our life, too, where even if we didn't, we'd probably, you know, just give a finger up to that and say, I don't care, you know, I'm doing this for me, and... Uh, well, I think, I think my biggest shock was I was appalled. I'm like, did, did you, do you know this? Do you know that there's one pill a day, and you're un- you can become undetectable, you can't transmit? And I was like, no, I didn't know that. And I'm like, me neither. So then, and then I'm just appalled that the information isn't out there. It's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah. But I was appalled at my diagnosis that, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's important to get that message out because uh, I think we've all discovered in the work we do around advocacy and, and activism that uh, even within our healthcare system, this isn't talked about nearly enough. And we still don't have, <clears throat> we still have rather um, HIV specialists that refuse to let their patients know what it means to be undetectable and they're no longer a risk and mm-hmm. and instead of alleviating that fear help to to stoke those uh, those fires of misinformation um, that have been going on for 35 plus years and the more we talk about it the uh, the better off society is going to be as a whole because again it gets people talking about it it gets people unafraid to get tested and we normalize that and I mean that's how we end this epidemic we have all the tools in the toolbox available to us to end this epidemic. There's no doubt in my mind that, that we have the tools to do it, but we need the political will to ensure it gets done. And, and I hope by doing these sort of events, we can, uh, we can come some small step closer to being able to do that. So mm-hmm. I thank each and every one of you for being on today's show. Um, again, I applaud you for, for disclosing publicly. Um, I know Guy and Carla, this is not something that uh, you haven't done before. Um, you've talked openly um, many times around your, your diagnosis and, uh, and what living with HIV means to you. But I know, Kelly, this is a huge step for you. And I know we've talked about this a lot on a personal level. And I just want to reassure you again that not only do you have my support, and I know I'm, Guy and Carla will, will stand behind you, you're not alone in this. You never will be. You never have been. And, uh, and I appreciate the fact that you're being so willing to, to be part of this event and, uh, and be on the show today. So thank you in particular for that. Uh, and thank all of you for uh, staying with us for another episode of, of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. Tune in again next week and we'll have some more uh, interesting guests. And on a future show, we're going to have a show all about the Be My HIV Valentine event and, and what happened and what it looked like. And you won't want to miss that. So thank you again for being with us tonight. Mm-hmm.